Well, good morning. It's so good to see all of you today. What a beautiful day. Spring is here. What a great celebration. Uh, so, uh, welcome in our Savior's name. Special welcome to guests, visitors, those joining us online. I'm so glad to have you with us today. As you may have noticed, we're not in our usual spot. The sanctuary looks a little different today. Um, our sanctuary ceiling is getting repaired. And uh, this should be the only Sunday that we're down here. We'll see. Uh, they have a little bit more of work to do down there. But for today, we're here. So sorry for the reduced setup for those of you online. Not as high quality as we usually put out. But thank you for your understanding and patience. The joy is that, is that God meets us where we're at. Jesus promises that where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them also, as Jesus meets us here for worship. Let us rise and make our beginning in the name of our triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. The good news for you today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is that as we see the new life of spring rise, we are reminded of the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. His death and resurrection give you new life. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, King of the universe, you have had mercy on us and sent your beloved Son to die for us and to rise in order that we might have new life. Lord, we praise you for all that you do for us in this body and life and what you have done for us for the life to come. So with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, as we move past the resurrection, our Old Testament readings are exchanged out for readings about the early church from the book of Acts. And so our first reading is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's Astounded. And when Peter saw it, it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses in his name, by faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. 
And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of love God the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. For sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to rise as you are able out of respect for Jesus and his word. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened, and they, saw, and they thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. A rather familiar story, right? The resurrection accounts appear very similar. But this is Luke's account of the exact same story. Last week we focused on the fear, the doubt, what was going on in the disciples' minds. But notice that here Luke has a bit of a different emphasis expectations expectations versus reality as the Jewish people and as the disciples had followed Christ they had plans they had ideas they had expectations of who Jesus was and what he was there to do the Jewish people They thought that he would be 
military leader. Somebody who would come to conquer the Romans. We see this attitude in Peter as well. For when they come to arrest Jesus, what does he do? He pulls out a sword and shaves off the ear of one of the servants. Jesus was expected to be the Savior of far more than just their sins. They expected them to deliver them from a physical oppression. The disciples probably expected many things of Jesus. They had plans. They had ideas. They had everything put in place. After all, Jesus was the great teacher. He was doing miraculous things, powerful things, mighty things. How it must have shaken their entire worlds when in an instant He is taken from them. To fail to understand what was going on after Jesus had warned them time and time again that He must die and that He would rise from the dead. And yet they failed to comprehend. Their expectations are not reality. I think about my life. I'm a planner. Uh, Do we have any planners in here? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm a planner. Everything needs to be planned out. I need to have every detail in place. That's why I like things like chess and games like that. The strategy is just beautiful to me. But it's that plan that gives me a sense of security. Having a plan, having goals, having expectations, it's part of who we are to some degree. And yet what happens when those plans, those expectations, don't come to reality. How do we handle that? What do we do? How do we wrestle with that? When I was a child, I had plans all the time. Oh, I'm going to be a firefighter or I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be a spy or I'm going to be a pastor. And eventually that, that changed into very different things. By preschool, I already had a spouse picked out. Absurd things. But I wanted a plan. And yet the more and more I planned out my life, the more it seemed silly. In high school, I had a dream of becoming a professional bowler. Well, you see how that turned out. As I was in the jazz band, one of my best friends and I, we had so much fun playing jazz. But I could never have planned for his tragic death the summer that I worked out in Idaho. This life, it doesn't always go as we plan. And it's in those moments that we look at God and we say, What are you doing? I thought we had this all worked out. I thought we had a plan in mind. We make plans for ourselves and then we project them onto God as if our plans are somehow God's plans for us. And then when things go wrong, we struggle. We do this all the time when we wrestle with God. When God does something that is different from our reality, from our personality, from what we expect from Him. I hear this all the time, especially in the secular world. People who come to me and say, well, I can't believe in a God who would stand against that idea. I don't believe in a God who would allow for this 
to happen? Well, my God is something like this. And all of a sudden, we as human beings begin to start playing God. Okay, so now I can form God into whatever I want. I can change the reality of who He is into how I want Him to be. All of a sudden, He values what I value. And we begin to miss the point of who God is. It's not that He values what we value, but it's that we as His children are to value what He values. That we are to be formed to be more and more like Him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have plans. We have expectations. But we have a God who is above all of that. Who has greater plans, greater expectations than we can possibly imagine. The Jews, the disciples, they had plans, they had expectations for what Jesus would do. He would come and establish an earthly kingdom and reign, but what good would that do for God's people? What good would that do? Their disappointment is nothing more than a gift to us. Because as Jesus came not to establish an earthly kingdom, He came for a greater purpose. He came to die and rise again in order that we might have new life. In order that our sins might be washed away and we might be called children of God. For that is what we are. We are indeed children of God. Notice what Jesus does with them. The disciples think that he's a ghost. And so what does he do? He says, here, touch me. Can you touch a ghost? You know what? I'll even prove it further. Give me something to eat. Do ghosts eat? I'm no ghost. For it's the risen Lord. And not only does he do that, but he goes beyond that. The disciples thought that he would be something far different than who he was. And so he begins to open up scriptures with them. To teach them who God is. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is no secret who God is. It's all right in here. God tells us every day of our lives who he is. He's a loving God who even though his creation had been ruined... He came to restore it. He wanted to grant you new life. At the burning bush, He says, I am who I am. I transcend your plans. I transcend your expectations. And I meet you where you're at. For I am your God. He comes into our lives and shows us His love For what greater love is this than someone would lay their lives down for their brother or sister? And that's exactly what Jesus did. It's no mystery who God is. And He meets us here with His love, with His forgiveness he comes here to redeem this world and so dear brothers and sisters as we have plans as we have expectations let those things be grounded not in here not even in here but in here for here is where we know where god truly is Here we see His love for us. Trust in that promise and know that the resurrected Lord has come for you. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Having heard God's word and reflecting upon it, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go before the resurrected Lord in prayer. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name, among us and among all the nations of this world. Lord, in your mercy, give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life, Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and Tim, our governor. Preserve order and decency in the fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless that we may practice righteousness while awaiting eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, as your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst and and comfort all those who weep. We pray especially for Diane Henderson, Jim Panos, Marion Redepenning, Rhoda Bork, Lucille Bernard, for the family and friends of David Geyer, Pat Morris, for Joy, Nona, Debbie Ross. Comfort them with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence, in the sacrament of this altar. Make us fit partakers in the repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
To the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Let us speak our blessing together from Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the the Holy Spirit you may abound in all. I invite you to rise as you are able as we join in singing our closing hymn, Rejoice, O pilgrim throng.
Amen. Please be seated. Just a couple of quick announcements. So, like I had mentioned before, we are down here because the sanctuary ceiling is getting repaired. Uh, if you wish to go down and take a look at, uh, at what they have already finished, you're certainly welcome to do so. I left the lights on down there so you can check it out. It's not quite done, but it should be done very soon. And we're, we are, pos let's see, what's the best way to put this? We are optimistically hopeful that we will be in the sanctuary next week. It, it's looking good that we will be. So, really exciting. Uh, we're still going to have uh, Christian growth today. Adult Bible class will be here. Um, and youth, where are you guys meeting? Down to the lounge. Um, so we'll still be having our Christian growth hour today. Uh, if you haven't been, today's a great day to come. We're talking about the parable of the sower. It's going to be an awesome conversation. So uh, be sure to stick around for that. With that, I pray God's richest blessings on you as you go about this week as a loved child of God, resting in his promise and in his peace. Go in peace. Amen.